His resume showed that he's an overcomer. His most recent report card suggests otherwise, though. It has not been good lately for Russell Wilson, and maybe it's the finger. He says it's not the finger, so we take him at his word. I mean, this is the Shereen Williams test. Your performance as a quarterback is either impaired by injury or if you insist you're not injured, then you stink. There's no middle ground. You, you either are impaired because you have some condition, like Baker Mayfield has had multiple, and if you insist you're fine, then the only other explanation is you just aren't very good anymore. All right, show me something time, Peter. You're up. You know, show me something, Russell Wilson. This is it, Mike. This is it. It is put up or shut up with your nice green cleats, uh, with the... Uh, you know the the whatever cause he is uh, he's using, which is uh, which by the way I think is fantastic, and it allows players to try to raise money for these things. But Russell Wilson right now has to show America in a very very big spot and show his teammates and quite frankly show himself, show John Schneider, show Pete Carroll, and maybe show some of those teams who are going to be looking for a quarterback in the off season. Is he right because he has not been right the last three weeks show me something Russell Wilson yeah I think that price may be going down for Russell Wilson compared to what it would have been earlier this year based on what we've seen recently I'm going to go with a game we just talked about but it resonates for me Teddy Bridgewater show me something this is your moment this is your opportunity this is one of the biggest games you have ever played on one of the biggest stages you have ever stepped onto this journey back from the devastating knee injury from late August of 2016 here you are your team is on the right side of 500 the Broncos haven't been above 500 this late in the season since the year they won the Super Bowl they've had some bad teams they've struggled this is a moment to go toe-to-toe with Patrick Mahomes, and if you win the game, you pull into a tie for first place with the Chiefs at the top of the division. So show me something, Teddy Bridgewater. You know, I hate to keep doing quarterbacks, but show me something, Josh Allen. We all know that Josh Allen is a franchise quarterback. He's going to be a very good quarterback, a great quarterback in this league, I believe, for the next decade. But you know what's happening right now? The New England Patriots are knocking at the door of what the Buffalo Bills believe is their inalienable right, and that is it is our turn to win the AFC East, to be dominant in the AFC East for a number of years. And I think this is the type of game against a defense that has so many standout impact players. could be a different star every week. He's got to solve a lot this week, Josh Allen does. And Chris Sims said it earlier in the show. They don't have a lot of premier weapons on offense that you trust. In my opinion, this is a game that Josh Allen has to find some way, somehow, to win at home in Orchard Park Monday night. Well, I'll show I'll see your latest quarterback and I'll raise you another quarterback. I'll go all in like the Rams did with their Teddy KGB gif when they went all in and they haven't won a game since then. Show me something. Show me anything. Show me not a pick six for a fourth straight game, Matthew Stafford, (laughs) because with the Jaguars coming to town, if they lose this game, Peter, there are uh, I'm not going to say they're done because there have been plenty of teams already this year we've said they're done and then they wake up and win five in a row. But you got no excuse this week. Now, OBJ trending against him playing. Daryl Henderson is banged up. This is going to be on Matthew Stafford to make this offense go. And if they can't beat the Jaguars, they got a serious problem. They got a, why did we trade away two first-round picks and a third-round pick? We just could have kept Jared Goff and lost to the Jaguars type of a problem. All right, here we go. Round three, show me something. Week 13. Peter, what do you got? Show me something, Najee Harris. Look, this is going to be a low-scoring game in Pittsburgh on Sunday. Ravens-Steelers, classic battle. You don't think, nobody thinks that Ben Roethlisberger is going to be able to dial up 340 passing yards and three touchdowns to win this game. So Najee Harris, who, by the way, last two weeks, 62 rushing yards. Najee Harris, you got drafted for moments like this. You're a first-round pick 
to be able to come into one of the biggest rivalries in sports and right away to influence it. Show me something, Najee Harris. You know, we can use the phrase show me something in various different ways, different intonations, different attitudes. I'm saying show me something, Kyler Murray, because I've missed you. You've been gone. The last time we saw Kyler (laughs) was five weeks ago last night in that epic game against the Packers. He injured his ankle on the next to last play of the game, threw the ball to A.J. Green, who didn't realize the 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 pattern had been changed. I still don't know why he thought he was blocking on a run play, but uh, we haven't seen Kyler Murray since then. And, you know, initially it's like, oh, I'm fine. Well, okay, then he misses one game. Well, he's going to miss another game. Well, then he misses another game. Well, and then now he's ready to go. I This guy, I, Peter, I, I think, and this may be a conversation for another day, whoever wins the one seed in the NFC, their quarterback, I believe, is going to be the MVP. Kyler Murray, even though you've missed that time, you still have a chance carry the Cardinals to the one seed, and uh, and become the NFL's MVP. Show me something, Kyler Murray, Peter. I like it. It's not an easy game playing in Chicago in December, especially for a guy who's a warm-weather football player. So I totally agree. I wish I'd thought of it and stolen it from you, Mike. The Cardinals return to one of their former homes in Chicago. Yes, kids, once upon a time, the Cardinals were in Chicago. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.